Hey guys, Jacob Dupre here. Today we're going to be talking about compression and compressors and what they do and a little bit about why you should use them. So by the end of this video, you have a good basic understanding of what compression is in music, how a compressor works, and then again, a little bit about how to apply it in your mixing. So what is compression? Basically, compression is when you have an audio signal, which has loud and soft parts, and you bring them closer together. You literally compress them. And how do you do that? With a compressor. And in this case, we have a compressor plugin that I've loaded into a DAW. Now, the concept of compression is pretty simple, right, to understand, but using a compressor may seem kind of daunting to you. And at first it is. I know when I first used it, um, it was pretty, you know, daunting and complicated looking. You kind of like, I don't know what this does. I don't know what this does. I don't know what this means. But once you learn how to use the most powerful tool you have in anything in music, which are your ears, a compressor will seem a lot simpler to you. So you have to use your ears. You have to listen. Those are what's going to tell you what sounds good and what doesn't. Therefore, when you want to learn how a compressor works, you need to use your ears. And so we'll do that. You know, I'll change the threshold or the ratio or these other things that you're going to learn about and you'll know what to listen for and hear how it's changing the audio signal. And that is super important for learning how to use a compressor. So let's jump right in. I have a track here. I actually want to play a little bit of it for you so you can hear the whole thing in context. I have electric piano, I have drum set with the snare separated, and then I have bass and vocal. So here's what that track sounds like. The vocal is uncompressed right now. There isn't a lot of compression or any kind of processing going on to any of it. This is basically just the raw tracks, right? So now to go over the basics of what a compressor does, let's add compression to the snare channel. Now a snare drum is really good for learning the basics of a compressor because it's a very simple sound, right? It's really just a transient, a transient which is essentially the strike of a sound, right? The very beginning, the attack. And a snare is basically just an attack. It's just one short strike. So it should be really easy for you to hear how I'm changing the different settings. And that's what I want you to know, and that's what I'm going to keep reminding you, is what to listen for when we're using compression. So I'm going to go ahead and add Ozone 9 Vintage Compressor. By the way, there are loads of great compressor plugins. They do all basically do the same thing. But I like ozone because it's very visual, it's easy to see, and in this case, you've got to be able to combine listening with what you're seeing in the plugin. But as you'll find, using your ears always ends up being more important. So the first thing we want to talk about in a compressor is the threshold. What is the threshold? We can hover over that, and actually it'll give us a definition. It's the signal level at which compression begins. So basically, that level is where you're telling the compressor to start compressing. So in this case, set at negative 12 dB, any signal that goes over 12, negative 12, will be compressed. Anything that's under that will not. Now how do you tell it how much to compress? That's the ratio. So ratio affects how much gain reduction is applied above the threshold. So right now, set at one to one, for every decibel that goes over the threshold, one decibel will be let out of the compressor. So basically, no change. It's not compressing at all. But if I were to change that to two to one, now if two decibels go above the threshold, one will come out. So it's reducing the gain, the volume, of those two decibels in half. It's taking the sound from two down to one. Or if it was four, down to two. So the ratio governs that. So Let's say I bring the threshold way down to make it dramatic. So this would be very dramatic compression because negative 40 dB is very soft and the snare drum is well over that volume. So basically it's going to compress the whole thing and the ratio will turn it up to something higher or moderate, maybe like 5, so we can really hear it. So let's listen to the snare drum with the compressor off and with it on. Turn off auto gain. We'll talk about that more later. Here's with no compression. Right, so that's the raw snare sound. 
Now we're gonna turn off bypass. Now the compressor's on, here's that. So you just heard how quiet that snare drum sound is now. And again, the reason why that happened is because the threshold is set to negative 40 dB. So anything that goes over negative 40 dB will be compressed. And the ratio is set at a ratio of five to one. So if you have five decibels over negative 40, one will be let out of the compressor. I'm gonna bring the threshold up a bit so the compression will be less. Let's hear how that sounds. So actually in this case, the threshold is so high that no compression is happening, right? Look at the graph up here. So see that blue line dips to show you what's being compressed in the waveform, which is what you're watching go by. So if I bring this down again, now we'll probably start seeing some compression. Right, so you see that little dip in the blue line is showing you. That's why I like ozone, because it shows you visually how compression is being applied. Well, let's mess with the ratio sum. So if I put the ratio down to two, the, two to one, the higher the ratio goes, the quieter the resulting sound will be, and the more compression will be added because the ratio is higher. So let's listen to that. Here's at two to one. Okay, so you can see the amount of compression that was done there. Now I'm gonna increase it to six. Now listen, really listen. Also, I would encourage you through some of these to close your eyes and listen too. Don't always just look with your eyes. But you can also, if you are looking, pay attention to the little blue line in the graphic. So see, now we're getting compression of negative 11 dB. Now if I turn it all the way up as high as it'll go, which is 20 to one, which is a lot, it'll go up even more. You'll have even more compression. So let's listen to that. So now we're getting compression of negative 14 to negative 17, which is a lot more. And again, with the compression all the way up, and if I were to lower the threshold all the way down to negative 60, now it's gonna just be completely squashed down and so quiet. I can barely just hear like a little tick in my headphones. The next thing we're gonna look at is a tack. And on a compressor, a tack determines how quickly processing is applied to a signal that reaches the threshold. So the Ozone 9 vintage compressor works really great, but it is meant to emulate an older style of vintage compressor. And some of the controls like the release only goes up to 150 milliseconds, which for most compressor plugins you'll find isn't very high. So I wanna go ahead and switch to another one. I'll disable this one and then go to Ozone 9 Dynamics, which also includes more features like a limiter and it has some other uh, functions in the compressor itself, but we're just gonna focus on using this one to show attack and release, because as you can see, it goes down to zero milliseconds all the way to 500, and the release goes to zero all the way to 5,000 milliseconds, which is a whole five seconds. So that extreme in values will really make it easy for you to hear the differences. I'm gonna also go ahead and blow up this plugin a little bit, make it bigger so you can see this graph here and you're going to see the differences very clearly in this graph. So let's start with attack. I'm gonna put the attack at zero. We're gonna go back to our snare drum sound, stick with that. I'm gonna bring down the threshold so we get some compression going, maybe do it at about five to one. And this is with the attack at zero milliseconds, so a very fast attack. So what you're hearing there is the entire beginning of the sound being compressed, right? Because the attack is at zero. So once that sound goes over the threshold, it's immediately compressing. So the transient, that's the attack of the snare drum, is being completely squashed. It's being compressed very hard. Now, as I bring the attack up gradually, you'll hear more of the beginning of that snare sound come through, that transient. So check this out.
And check it out here on the screen. You see how that part of the waveform is now coming through before that graph? Watch when I put it to the other extreme. See how there's a straight line here? That's because that's that zero milliseconds. Literally, as soon as that waveform hits on the screen, boom, it's being compressed. But as I bring that attack back and make it longer, Now what you're hearing is more of the uncompressed attack of the snare drum coming through. Now we're going to check out release. And release determines how quickly processing is stopped when the signal falls below the threshold. You can really think of attack and release as opposites of each other, right? So attack is once any sound goes over the threshold, it's how fast the compressor will start compressing. And release is once any sound drops below the threshold, how long it takes for the compressor to stop compressing. Or you'll hear a lot of people say, recover. They'll say, release determines how long it takes the compressor to recover. We'll do the same thing with release. I'll keep it at zero milliseconds and watch the graph and listen for how the compressor recovers, how it lets go of that compression. Let's check it out. Now, also you notice because the release is very short, you're seeing a lot of jagged lines in that recovery graph, right? You see how jagged it looks? It's not very smooth, but as I increase that release time, what you're going to see is that recovery line become longer, especially once we get to 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. It's going to take a whole five seconds for it to come back, and you'll see that line smooth out. So now I'm going to play it again. And just to show you, I took some of the repeated snare drum hits off so that they'll just be a strike and then silence after that. So you can really see over a longer period of time how the compressor reacts with those different extremes on the release. So back to zero milliseconds. So it didn't take long to recover. See, it recovered very quickly. Now if I put it to 5,000, watch how long it takes. still recovering, still going. <laughs> so obviously there's no more sound, so it's not compressing because there isn't anything for it to compress, but that's still crazy, right? How long that takes. So maybe if you put it somewhere in the middle, it would sound like this. So that covers the basic functions of a compressor, but now let's take that into a mix and use it on our vocal track. All right, so let's listen to the track as it is right now. Again, keep in mind, I haven't spent a lot of time mixing with this or doing compression of the other instruments, so it's a pretty raw track, but we're really just gonna focus on the vocal right now. So listen to the vocal, listen how it sounds and how it sits in the mix right now. Okay, so hopefully you noticed that the vocal came out in some places, but most of it was very hard to hear. It was very soft, so the other instruments were burying it, right? We can fix that with compression. So let's start. I'm just going to play back. I'm going to let it play and mess with all the settings and listen for how it changes that sound. Okay, so now at the peak, I think I've got about, you know, maybe negative 10 decibels of compression going on. So now that we've applied some compression, really all we've done is 
lower the volume of the track, basically, right? More specifically, all the sound that's going over the threshold is being compressed, right? So we've, we've done this to the track. So now we want to compensate for that volume loss that we have from compression and raise the whole volume of the vocal. And you do that with makeup gain. The makeup gain is over here. Here's our gain. And see it says effects gain after compression. So basically what you're doing is you have input gain. That's the sound that's going into the compressor. Then you have compression happening. The compressor's working. And then you have the gain afterwards. So input, compress, boost the volume with makeup gain. So now we're going to boost that gain. I'm going to play the track back and I'm gonna bring this up until I feel like it's at a comfortable volume, an acceptable volume. I'll say how I feel Maybe then I can heal And move on with my life Oh, how I will run like the Okay, and I think that sounds pretty good. Now, again, this is a raw track that I'm doing. I haven't done a lot of mixing or other compression or anything at all, so I would probably do more to balance the volume, probably do some other preliminary mixing, but I got it to sound a lot better, right? You can hear so much more of the vocal. It's so much more present. Uh, again, no EQ has been done. Not a lot of extra stuff has been done. Just added some compression to that lead vocal. Just to show you, let's bypass it, so let's turn it off and listen to what it sounded like before we did any compression, when we started. Okay, so I had a really dynamic performance, probably almost a little too dynamic, but it's a good example because it's very extreme. Those softer parts, like when I sang, do, 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 de, de, I'd started so soft, and with it uncompressed like that, you can hardly hear it. It gets buried so much. But when we turn that compression on, now that we've limited the volume of those louder parts, we were able to, as a result, bring everything up, and now those softer parts of my vocal are so much more apparent uh, you can really hear the words I'm saying much clearer, and it just shows you why compression is so important. So let's listen to it one more time. I'm gonna say how I feel Maybe then I can heal And move on with my life All right, so we've covered the basics of what a compressor does. This really just scratches the surface. There's so much more you can do, especially getting more advanced and using your ears and more complicated mixes. So I would invite you to leave comments on other videos you'd like to see about compression. Maybe you wanna learn how to compress rock vocals specifically or drums or in specific genres of music, whatever it is, we'd love to hear about it. Also, if you have any questions about the kind of compressor you should get or any questions about the ozone compressors or any plugins that you'd like to know about please comment there below or you can always call your sweetwater sales engineer thanks for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe click here for more videos like these or go to sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs